What's going on guys, today I'm going to be talking about Infinite Warfare and giving you guys my full in-depth review. This is going to be a long video, so grab a brew, grab a drink or something and just enjoy. So, I'm going to start off with the, the things that I have mixed feelings about, in all honesty. I'm not going to start with the bad or the good, but I'm going to start with the mixed feelings. And the connections were one of them mixed feelings for me. I know a lot of other people have had really good experiences and really bad experiences as well. And for me, from the get-go, it's been hit and miss the whole time. The whole year, it's been hit and miss. It's been either absolutely fantastic and great and everything's worked perfectly fine and all the rest of it. Or, the game has been really stuttery, really weird, as if it's like dropping frames, but it wasn't, it was packet loss and all the rest of it, and it really, really is frustrating to play with a game like that, because you die and you're like, that was connection, 100% connection, because you just emptied a full ammo clip or magazine onto a guy, and he, he turns around and kills you with one bullet or whatever, and you're definitely shooting him, and you're definitely getting hit markers on your end, but it just doesn't register to the server quick enough and stuff like that, or if you're on peer-to-peer, -peer, it doesn't register quick enough, so you end up dead, and they stay away scot-free. Another thing, which I was really, really confused about, is when they added kill trading to the game, and a lot of people hated it. It was really, really frustrating. They enabled it and you could get a kill and get killed. And the amount of times that you were thinking, yeah, I've got this gunfight in the bag and then you would die afterwards. And it was like, oh, thanks, game, you know. That was great. So, moving on, combat rigs can be frustrating sometimes. I would have preferred the game to not have them at all, but that's just my opinion. Same with Black Ops 3, I think both of the games would have been so much better without the combat rigs, without the specialists, without all the abilities and weapons that were one hit or gave you an advantage in gunfights and stuff like that. I think if it wasn't for all of that, I'd have had more nuclears and more deatomizer strikes and all the rest of it in both of the games and I just think it would have been more enjoyable because to me more gun on gun skill and not something that you could just press a button and gravity spike or pull out a claw and just melt people across the map with it you know I think that is kind of annoying a lot of bugs and glitches were on launch a lot of bugs and glitches were on launch throughout the game's life cycle as well but they got pretty fi they got fixed pretty quickly when once they have been found so once they found a bug they knew it was there they basically fixed it within like a week if that like they pretty much fixed it the day after or a couple of days later or whatever as soon as there was a patch you know the patch notes it was like this bug has been fixed all that good stuff the one which I'm going to just jump into negative for a second right now is the fact that there was an update bug which it requires you to restart the game to update the game but then it would boot loop back into that thing telling you to restart the game and you just couldn't get out of it so people had to eat, delete the game and reinstall it or they had to find another way around, like going into Modern Warfare Remastered and then clicking on Input Warfare again and all that sort of stuff to try and get around it. And even that didn't work for some people, so they had to completely uninstall the game and reinstall it, which is not a good thing, and I do not want to see that happen with World War II or any other game in the future. But moving back to my indifferent thoughts is the mechanical skill gap. Now, a lot of people probably think the skill gap in advanced Call of Duties is not as good as the skill gap in a normal Call of Duty. And it's a different type of skill gap in my opinion. The veteran players in Infinite Warfare are going to destroy a lot of people because they use the wall running, they use the boost jumps, they use their abilities and their knowledge of the maps and where they can jump to and from and gain height and all the rest of it to get behind people. And that's why the new players can't really deal with it. They're like, this is so confusing, I don't like this. And day one, there was people that were that good at the game already, who'd been playing it early or whatever, or the, you know, just uh, were natural from Black Ops 3 at this game. And they got control of it, they knew the maps, they knew where to run to, they knew all the places they needed to go to get an advantage. 
and that is something that I really liked about the game in one way, but I also disliked in another way because it did make it hard to survive sometimes, especially when you ended up running into like three or four people that were just running around together in parties and teams like some people have been doing. So that's just something you can't really do anything about. Moving on to what they did wrong. Bad timing following Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare. If this game had come out when Ghost did or before that, you know, or it had come out in like three years after we've had World War 2 and a couple of other games, I think this game would have done so much better. I also think that the bad press from the beginning, the bad press coming from the trailers and everything like that, as soon as people saw that it was futuristic, people started dislike bombing things, they started saying that the game was shit and the, the game hadn't even been released. So there was a bad press around the game from the start and I think that really hurt Call of Duty this year, even though the game was pretty much one of the best I've played. So, that's just my opinion. The game was unfinished on release. We didn't have leaderboards, we didn't have theater mode, we didn't have features that should have been there day one to like months after release. And that was something, you know, leaderboards and stat, checking your stats and all that, I don't really care about. I just care about playing the game and enjoying myself. But a lot of the community didn't what they just use that and the negative press to just not play the game i think and i think they didn't give it a first shot either once all of that stuff was implemented and all the rest of it but that's just my opinion on the fact or on the matter or whatever synaptic it had a placebo effect yes its hitboxes were slightly different to a standard player they were in slightly different places because he's a robot but it, it creates a placebo effect where people thought because it's a skinny character, it's got skinnier hitboxes, therefore if you use it, you're a triad and no one likes you, basically. And it became this thing of, oh, he, he only killed me because he's using Snaptic, when that's really not the matter at all. But, you know, it's a placebo effect and people just thought they couldn't hit him or whatever and it got frustrating for a lot of people. Another thing that I didn't like about it was propulsion. I didn't think it should be in the game. In a game where you already regenerate boost and stuff very quickly, a lot of really good players were able to abuse this. It has been toned down right now, and it's a lot better. It's in a lot better position than it was, but I still don't agree with that perk on Synaptic. So it should have even been a perk that everyone could use, but I think they would have become a crutch perk. So. It is what it is. Game battles and ranked play. Ranked play integration was pretty much terrible. It just throws you into a random lobby. There is no, you know, waiting in a queue, joining people into it and all the rest of it like there was in Black Ops 2, which was the best ranked play we've ever seen. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Take ranked play from Black Ops 2 and implement it. It will work. For Christ's sake, it doesn't need changing all the time. Yes, we want innovation and changes, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I'm sorry, but that's just my opinion. As for game battles, should have been the day one, in my opinion, for the competitive players, and it wasn't. But, it's there now, and it works flawlessly. So, it is what it is. I'm glad it's there now, but, yeah. Theater mode doesn't exist in this game, Black Ops 3 had it, Advanced Warfare had it I believe, but it looks like Theater mode is something that is now being taken away from the content creators and taken away from Call of Duty now because we have PS4 showplay or Xbox One showplay and guess what, it sucks and it doesn't even record the stuff you want it to and I can't go into Theater mode and get a cinematic of me killing four people with one bullet or whatever anymore because that won't exist unless they modify it on PC and do it that way and then I'll have to download and use someone else's cinematics and clips to actually make a montage or an interesting video for the specific game so it is what it is but you know there's always works around workarounds of theatre mode and stuff apparently and it seems like that's the way it's going to be now 
unfortunately, but I still loved Theatre Mode in Black Ops 3. You could go back, record a gameplay that maybe you corrupted on your hair drive or something like that. You could go back, grab it, and actually use the footage with your live commentary or whatever and just put a thing in saying, oh, it's Theatre Mode gameplay because the gameplay was corrupted. And you could still use that gameplay that was so fantastic. In this game, if you do well and you're not recording well, PS4 sure is probably going to screw it up, so you can't use that gameplay anymore, which is pretty damn great. Sorry, I just banged my desk. So, presentation of the game itself was terrible. The normal settings after you adjust the brightness. You had to go in, turn off motion blur, turn off film grain and all the rest of it and use different settings, contrast, brightness, all the rest of it to actually make the game look as good as it should have. Infinity Ward, I don't know why you basically wanted to kill the look of the game when it looks so much better the way a lot of people have got it set up for YouTube. So, moving on. Weekly challenges were laughable. I mean, you could complete them in 5 to 10 games. It didn't even really matter on your skill level. Unless you were getting like one kill a game, then you would probably struggle to get the 100 kills with a certain weapon. But for most people, them challenges were completed in less than an hour. And that to me is stupid. If you're going to do that, have a daily challenge and a weekly challenge, and have the weekly challenge be something like get 20. 10,000 kills or a thousand kills and have the daily challenge be like the weekly challenges were it would make sense So moving on Moving on there was no group or Petty group system to find and play with people like there was in Black Ops 3 You know in Black Ops 3 you could create a group, you know move in like that and just Let people join and it would work flawlessly in this game, no, it took forever and sometimes it would kick people out all the time and all the rest of it. And that's why a lot of streamers that were, you know, playing in the warfare didn't really want people joining the games and stuff because it would create a lot of issues, especially when it came to connections across seas and all the rest of it. But it is what it is. The hardcore weapon balance is absolutely god awful. You might as well just use the MV4 and nothing else because it, the MV4 is a one hit kill machine and it works really, really well in hardcore. I was going into hardcore to try and get the Howitzer Gold and stuff like that and I ended up just doing it in core because it was actually easier to get kills with it in core than it was in hardcore because every time you jumped in the air trying to get that shot off, you got one shot and that's really frustrating. They could have just reduced the damage or added another hit scan or whatever, like 29 damage, so it actually takes two shots to kill and not three, and that would have solved the problem, but it is what it is. The Ghost Perk. There's no reason not to use it. Like, it basically works all the time, and if you're sitting in a corner, it works. It's not like Black Ops 3, you have to be moving, which I think sucks because it basically makes people want to camp even more. But anyway, let's move on to the good things. What they did right. Honestly, the refined advanced movement was great in this game. It was more polished, it was more finished. I think it worked a lot better than Black Ops 3's did. Yes, you could wall run more. Yes, you could boost up in the air and stuff. And it, you didn't boost as high as you did in Black Ops 3. But you could boost more because your charger would it would recharge much quicker so you could stay in the air longer kind of especially if you knew how to wall run and take advantage of all the different locations on the maps and head glitches and all the rest of it you could really do well in this game and i really like that it made for a very very good experience in my opinion i know certain people didn't like it but it is what it is. Not everyone likes Call of Duty and not everyone thinks Infinite Warfare is good, but to me it was a very, very good game. Moving on, weapon balance is one of the best I've ever seen in Call of Duty. Especially when you, you know, take into account that we had so many variants. And guess how the variants were balanced? They all had a positive and a negative side. Yeah, they might have had, you know, oh yeah, you might 
regen health, but it does less damage, or something like that. Yeah, it takes like more shots to kill, or the range drop off is much, much quicker, or whatever. You know, it really, really did work well, and I enjoyed it a lot because some of the weapon perks were like, especially with the snipers, the Herbin dude was like, oh, you get like a rechamber uh, quicker. You can rechamber quicker, so you could actually reload your bullet and shoot your next one much quicker than you could with the original gun, making it a lot easier to hit clips with it and stuff like that, which I think that was great, but the downside to it was something like, I don't know, even if you had the suppressor on, you showed up on the map or something. I'm just pulling that one out of the earth, but you know what I mean, like it made sense and the weapons were very very balanced there wasn't one gun in the game that i used that i was like you know what i don't like this at all and i can't use it i have that solar camo so that shows i've used every single weapon in the game pretty much and i was working on black sky and decided to give it a miss because i just didn't want to grind through the classic weapons but it is what it is like solar camo or whatever it was good, it was a good grind, and I kind of got bored of the grind eventually because it was that much of a grind at one point, but it is what it is. Moving on. Variants, score streak variants. Unlocked via salvage, they're not locked behind supply drops like anything else in this game. You know, the supply drop system in this game was very, very good. And the score streak system, once they added the variety of the uh, variants for the score streaks, you basically got an option like you can have a UAV that lasts longer, but it gets taken out much easier. And you know, you could have a hater instead of the advanced UAV, but it lasts less amount of time and all the rest of it. It was great, in my opinion, that they decided to go that route with the score streaks, and I would like actually to see that come back. I would, I, I actually think it's a good idea because you have a positive and a negative, and the positive and negatives basically balance themselves out, which I think is a great way to do it. So if Sledgehammer do implement a score streak variant system, I do think that is the way to go. So. Map design. Let's talk map design. It was very good. No map was unplayable. There wasn't a map in the game that I just didn't want to play ever. Noir comes to mind when it comes to DLC maps that weren't very good, but it wasn't a map that I didn't want to play, and it wasn't a map that I would just leave if I saw it. Unlike some other games, like Black Ops 3, you know, the map with the big mech suits and all that that was a world war 2 remake with all the massive mech suits every time that map came up i just left instantly and i didn't enjoy it at all there isn't a map in infinite warfare that makes me want to do that at all all the base maps are good i wouldn't say they're perfect i wouldn't say they are you know amazing but they're good enough to play and they were designed with competitive in mind and none of the maps were really boring there was a wide variety of themes, locations, colour palettes and designs within the maps and I really like that about this game. Moving on to DLC and weapon variants and how they handled the supply drop system. Weapon variants were all unlockable via salvage unless it was a DLC weapon, unless it was unlocked it was locked behind the Quartermaster Collection. And the Quartermaster Collection was updated throughout the game's life cycle, giving you, you know, the option to craft more and more weapons throughout the game. Salvage was earned by playtime. It was earned by earning keys via earning playtime or buying supply drops. So you could buy your way through more salvage and while you're buying your way through salvage or while you're grinding the game out when you're unlocking supply drops to get key via keys you could also get them weapons via that way meaning you could save that salvage for other weapons coming down the line and i really really like that another thing is there was a lot of customization and a lot of cosmetics and gestures and all the rest of it that were very very interesting hence why gesture warfare became a thing 
and it was really, really good. I really enjoyed it, and when it came to DLC weapons, post-launch DLC weapons, if you had the season pass, you got them for free. If you unlocked one via a supply drop, you got the base weapon for free. Or you could just complete a random challenge, which was like get 300 kills with an assault rifle to get another assault rifle or whatever. It made it very, very consumer friendly and it made it very, very easy for people not to spend any money on the game. But it also gave you that incentive if you want the variants of this new DLC weapon, they're locked in the Quartermaster collection, therefore you have to buy supply drops. So they still made their money via that. And that was a very, very good compromise, in my opinion. Moving on, the perk balance was amazing. I have to say there was no crutch perks, such as, you know, focus, or toughness, or hand, or anything like that. None of the perks really gave you a massive advantage. Yes, they give you a little bit of a bonus, or whatever, but none of it was majorly advantageous. The only perk that I do not agree with in this game is Ghost, and I mentioned that earlier. Just because it runs all the time. If you... You're sat in a corner, the radar scans, and it doesn't show you up on the minimap even if you're not moving. Don't agree with that, but that's just another thing. And let's get into featured modes. Featured modes were something that came up every single week, and they featured the specific mode that they came up with some crazy idea or some mode that they wanted people to play and enjoy. There was Cranked, there was Jest of Warfare, there was, you know, Hair Point was in there at one point, Kill Confirmed, Uplink, you know, they really, really mixed it up. And they had, like, the Chaos Mode, and where you earned your score streaks really, really quickly, and lots of other stuff, and it was really, really fun. I think that the featured modes should be a, some, something that comes back in every single Call of Duty to be in the future, and they should come up with some crazy ideas and just go completely balls to the wall with it and completely have fun with that because it makes people want to jump on and play the game every single week to try out the new mode. Really, really enjoyed that. Another good thing is that they had a, a variety of events and things to grind for throughout the game's life cycle. We had, you know, Black Sky gear, we had the Black Sky camel, we had solar camel, solar gear. We had events like the Halloween Scream that's going on right now. We had double XP, the Quad Feet, the Days of Summer events, and even more throughout the game's life cycle, making it very, very, very interesting to play, and it kept people enticed. And it was like Infinity Ward almost saying, yeah, not that many people are playing their game, but we're going to support the ones that are by putting all these events in and making their experience of this game much better. So thank you Infinity Ward for supporting your game right till World War 2 came out. I really appreciate it and I've really enjoyed my time with the game. Moving on, incredibly fast loading times. The loading times from lobby into the map and you playing the game in that lobby were very very quick. This is because the loading times were increased or made much much quicker because it was a seamless transition between the lobby and the games. The maps are loaded in the background while you're waiting for the lobby, meaning that as soon as you, you know, knew what map you were getting, it was already loading in the background. So when you jump in, it was the first 10 seconds, you jump in, first 10 seconds, you wait that 10 seconds, select your class, and there you are, you're playing the game already. Really, really love that, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we get that in World War II. That's just my opinion, but I really hope it does come to World War II and future Call of Duty games because it made the experience so much more fluid and you can jump from game to game much quicker. And it was really, really good. People that didn't have that have limited time really appreciate it. Connection icons added to the game so you could cut so you could actually you know, tell what was going on. If you were getting packet loss, it would show you. If you were getting drop frames, it would show you. And I think that is something that a lot of Call of Duty games have been missing. And we saw it in the World War II beta, so I'm definitely hoping that it's going to be there in the full game's release. Now, to wrap it up, I really enjoyed Infinite Warfare, and I do think it 
got a lot of crap that he really didn't deserve. I think there was a lot of people that didn't actually play it that were making loads of crap up about the game and a lot of people just jumped on that negative bandwagon, but that's just my opinion. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, smash that thumbs up button, links in the description to all my social media, Patreon and more. And I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.